You saw a lot of OCP accepted and OCP inspired symbols. Um, both uh, Emily talked about it, our video talked about it, and you saw them in the ONF presentation. Um, there are two brands within OCP. One is called OCP Accepted. And what that means is everything about the product is open, meaning the design spec is open and the complete design package is open. So you can get Gerber's, you can get manufacturing plans, you can get bombs. Everything is open. OCP Inspired means just the spec is open. So. As you're looking around in your infrastructure, as you're looking around in your own um, you know, data centers and you want to start adopting OCP products, start looking for those two brands. One of the biggest con uh, contributors of OCP accepted products is a company called Edgecore. And George is here from Edgecore. He's the CEO and president um, and SVP uh, of Acton which is the parent company. Um, he's also a board member at ONF. Um, he's the vice chair now of OCP um, Taiwan. You've probably seen him around here. He's, uh, he's had 40 years of experience, um, both at HP and EdgeCore. So there's a lot that, um, that this gentleman knows, and there's a tremendous amount of uh, subject matter expertise. And today, he's going to be talking to you about the Edge. George. Thank you. Thank you, Arshana. I pretty appreciate it. Thanks for that introduction. So good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And this is our uh, one of our first uh, OCP Taiwan um, you know, gathering. And it seems like we have a great uh, participation. I hope um, my presentation also adds value. As you can see in front of me that everybody spoke today, and also Dr. Charles here, there's a lot of synergies, as Arshna said. And also, um, you know, as we grow, as we really make uh, more, uh, you know, inroads into this uh, whole consortium of uh, open community, we need to kind of understand how we work together. So my speech today, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, how open communities uh, work together and make cross-pollination. And with that, I also like to discuss about, you know, a little bit about our products and what we're doing, especially in the 5G uh, implementation area and uh, what we need to do going forward. So let me start by saying, what are we all as a community right now? What are we all trying to solve? As all the uh, you know, presenters ahead of me presented that, you know, the bandwidth is going to be exploded. You've seen all the presentations and relative to that, this is really a big move into the whole uh, change of the infrastructure. Infrastructure, if you, uh, you know, if we understand going forward, it will be 5G, AI, edge, edge computing, IR, VR, all these things gonna require seriously always on infrastructure. It will re require almost no latency. It was high quality network and uh, high quality services. This is a imperative. This is imperative that if we cannot do this, we will not get the benefit of, let's say, 5G and what 5G is promising, and all, 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 the, all the IoT is promising, edge computing promising, and cloud promising. So to do that, it, what needs to happen is that the entire infrastructure has to be uh, upgraded. And if you need to upgrade the infrastructure to keep up with the bandwidth, the cost is also moving up exponentially. To do that, we need to make sure that we reduce the, not only the operating cost, but also capital expenditure. And with that, definitely, this is where OCP comes, this is where the community comes, this is where openness comes, because we definitely need open infrastructure. It's sometimes called disaggregation or open networking, and other times called you know, white boxes. And on top of it, have you seen this, the presentation from Charles, not only the hardware infrastructure, but also all the elements of the stack and all the way to the orchestration layer and automation. This morning also we talked about how we are giving the software more power and making software and, and also all the applications on top of software really help you solve a specific you know, problem that you're trying to solve and make sure that you get the benefit of cost, not and liberating yourself, liberating the software, liberating all the aspects of infrastructure. 
Now let's talk about, you know, the overall, the 5G, a basic network. Just, just imagine this is a basic network. And then, what are the things that we have to do to upgrade 5G? First of all, the BBUs, this is the base brand unit. This is the current legacy where you have the, uh, you know, base, base, base board, um, you know, uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, application there, and also uh, your RF is there. This is closed, you know, room or closed circle where it's all wireless is hosed, everything is housed, and everything is, you know, run by that. This has to be open now into radio unit, into uh, computer unit, or into, uh, you know, uh, uh, and also distributed unit. Second, you have to look at the front hall. Today, a legacy front hall is run by, uh, you know, WDM as the transport protocol. Very expensive, big units, and that is also need to be upgraded into radio over Ethernet. That needs to be upgraded from the WDM into Ethernet switching. And that's what needs to happen and needs to be also disaggregated. Carrying on into the cell site, you know, gateway, or we call it sometimes cell site tower, or cell site, you know, router, it has to go from 1G to 2500 uplink. It has to have those elements. Otherwise, you are not going to be able to get the benefit of all these, you know, bandwidth and what you are trying to do to solve for 5G and implementation of you know, uh, fast latency, I mean, almost, I mean, sorry, almost no latency, and also, you know, trying to understand the, the high quality network. Of course, then you have your aggregator routers, and this today has to be also upgraded into 100G and also 400G uplink. This is where the mega scale operators like Facebook, which we are working with, we introduced recently with Facebook the Minipack product. It's basically doing this, not only at this aggregator level or a spine level, but also at the, at the eventually you can use it for 400G uplink. And of course the core. This is also central, very essential for 5G you know, upgrading all the way to the mobile core and ethernet. And this is where even today, mega scale operators are thinking about 800G jump. So this is very imperative to understand this. And this needs very careful, you know, uh, design, architecture. It needs a lot of manpower. It needs a lot of thinking, making sure that all this 5G gets implemented very effectively across uh, the network. Now, Let's go talk about how these products are upgraded or how these products will be delivered. This is where we work with uh, OCP. We've been fortunate enough to have uh, working with OCP since inse in inception of OCP with Facebook. And we learned a lot and we we, together we contributed a lot. Here, definitely you need openness as we all discussing all this you know, morning. You need disaggregation, you need white box, because this way you can control the destiny of your cost. You can really unlo un unleash the, uh, let's say, unblock the uh, vendor lock-in. You can use the best hardware with the best software, with the best stack, with the best orchestration, and you can put it together as Charles was uh, you know, explaining ahead of me. Now, <clears throat> so that's why open, you know, uh, community like Open Compute Project is very essential. And Open Compute Project today has about a more than, you, you've seen it in the morning, uh, more than, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that, uh, you know, 15 work groups that are particularly tasked for each, let's say, a module, if you call it, of the infrastructure to really enhance it, to work through it, uh, build it up, test it, and put it back in the community. So this is where the, uh, the, the imperative of o OCP comes, and why OCP is important, and how OCP is really helping the community. Now, however, OCP needs active community members. And this is where we encourage everybody to join us. We've been part of OCP for a long haul. 
As you've seen from Emily's introduction, uh, uh, today we have, HCOR has submitted more than 29, I think, uh, you know, OCP uh, certified, OCP inspired, you know, products out there. And most of what Charles uh, was showing, he's been very modest because he needs to be neutral, but, it's, but most of them are coming from HCOR today for test, for POC and implementation around the world. So this is why we encourage you to join us, to join the community, and, and uh, let's take it further and let's enhance it further together. So let me give you an example. This is uh, how the community works today. And uh, if you look at this, this is one of our products. It's a uh, cell site router. It's cell site gateway. We designed this with uh, AT&T and we designed this with the uh, OCP Telco group. This is the Telco hardware, hard, hardware OCP group. So after that, when we worked the architecture with this group and also with AT&T, we put and then worked with the another uh, OCP group or work group called you know, uh, networking software. This is where ONI comes from. This is where Sonic now comes from and others joining. We work with another group within OCP called Hardware Management Group. This is where we take all the open components like Redfish API and put it all together as a distribution on top of our ASIC. And we carry it on to another work group with Linux Foundation called OpenBNC or Run BMC, which also is part of the OCP work group. And we all put it together and Edgecore comes, works with all, oops, sorry, what did I do? I apologize. Edgecore comes and works with everybody and putting it this together and making sure that the product is ready, the product is tested, the product is supported and delivered. Now this product is part of the OCP certified list and it is being used at AT&T as well, just to give you a perspective. Carrying on, so who are these open communities? And uh, my talk today, as I said, it is more about also how these old community, communities are working together. Charles is part of, uh, we, we, you know, Charles is part of uh, ONF. Of course, we all here are because of OCP. We have TIP, which is the Telecom Infra Project. And I'll show, a minute, I show in a minute right now how we work with TIP as well. And OpenBNC, and all other red dots are there. There's, there's plenty of coming. And this is how the, all the community is coming together. And, and this is how you take from the community, you put it back to the community, and you grow with the community because you will have the entire community behind you doing innovation and fast innovation. It's, you're not alone anymore. And this is where the beauty of it, because you can take best of the community, enhance it, use it to your own specific needs and use case, and on top of it, you know, bring it back to the community. Trust me, people feel like, oh, it's my IP, how can I wanna share it, why I need to share it, Trust me, it helps. It helps your organization, it helps the community, and believe me, together as innovative power, all of us have a piece of this, all of us can make money. <clears throat> now, let me explain about how these uh, open communities are collaborating, how we are working together. The other slide that I showed you, this one, sorry, going back, it's how within the OCP work groups this is working. Now I'm gonna go show about how collectively with other communities, we are making another progress. And as Arshna said, it's very, very complementary. The middle product here, it's uh, our product too, from HCore. it's called Cassini. It is the uh, coherent optical packet transponder box, <coughs> which also includes Ethernet ports. It connects data center to data center. This is another element of cord that Charles explained to connect data center to data center. It has nine, I'm oh, sorry, eight slots for coherent optical you know, modules. It can be ACO or DCO, analog or digital. You can write the S curve of technology and this box can last forever with all the optical devices that are coming. We work with Acacia, we work with NTT Electronics and others for the modules. Now, having said that, this was also designed 
by uh, or or in conjunction, we made this uh, design with TIP, tele, tele, uh, Telecom Infra Project. And with that, <coughs> it went ahead and uh, we worked with ONF, uh, with Charles's team. They provide the uh, uh, SDN controller and some of the software. We work with the uh, o OCP to get, again, the hardware management. And with Linux Foundation, with, the, uh, <coughs> with OpenBNC, putting it all together, again, testing it, evaluating it, certifying it, and putting it in the community. This product is also part of OCP certified. Now, since my company is paying my bills, so I need to talk a little bit about our products as well. <laughs> <coughs> but just a sample, okay? Just a sample. I'm not here to, to, uh, to promote the Act and Edge Core, but I just want to make sure you understand why this is important and why we're what we're trying to do. Uh, and all the other products that Charles actually spoke to, part of those uh, infrastructure and what we need to make that 5G implementation upgraded, you, can, you will see some of the products. <clears throat> okay, this is the front hall, as I talked about. What we're trying to do here is making sure that this front hall product is changing from WDM transport protocol into uh, Ethernet, Ethernet transport or Ethernet switching. This product is being, uh, right now, and I can say this openly, being also architected with AT&T. This product will have a very robust, uh, let's say, uh, outdoor, uh, you know, uh, all the elements of very robust outdoor um, uh, the certification, and also, let's say, the high temperature and low temperature, as you can see from uh, minus 40 to 65, even 70 degree. Plus, this product will have all the necessary, you know, time sync and 1588, you know, uh, all the necessary full, full synchronization as well. Second is this uh, edge core open, open the cell site gateway. This is also for 5G implementation for the tower. This has been also deployed outdoor. As you can see, this comes with a lot of uh, uh, working togetherness with TIP, working togetherness with uh, AT&T. This is ready now, and uh, we have software running on it, and uh, this is being implemented for 5G implementation. These are core product. These are very important, essential products. These are with Broadcom, sec, the gen, uh, Broadcom Dune architecture, DNX architecture. These products are uh, Jericho, if, uh, if you're familiar with ASIC, very powerful ASIC. And what we're trying to do with this is that, as you can see, with the 40 port and 80 port, um, uh, you know, uh, 100G products here. And this can go also, you know, to support all the permutation of, of how you break the cables and et cetera. These products are geared towards core network. These are like going to the heart of, you know, disaggregation for Cisco's Nexus as an example. Finally, the last product, as Charles explained, for access, for edge, for access, we have these, we, we, we implemented this the first, oh, by the way, all these products are first to, first to market. We were the first on all these products, first to market, and I'll explain in a minute. This is what we did in terms of getting inroads into all telcos from the access point of view. This has, this, this gives us the PON and XGS PON products. This is what Charles talked about, the Volta software or the SIBA support from ONF. These are working now, and it's, uh, it's there. And uh, just want to make sure I made a com make a comment also that these old products that I showed to you for 5G implementation or IoT implementation or AR or cloud or edge computing, all of these are fast and first time to market. As soon as we know that ASIC is there, uh, Edge Core and Acton, this is our core competency. We, we, we are innovators. We work with the community to innovate fast and first to market and also standardize it and put it in OCP. All right? 
So with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. And I just want you to know that if you would like to see more of these products, unfortunately we're not in this uh, you know, vicinity, but uh, because we are networking people, <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have server and storage. They put us to the other side, Nangang, I, I guess, to the, to the other side of, uh, of the Computex. Please come see us. You can see all these products. You can see also our new introduction, especially the mini pack, which Facebook is adopting right now for their, for their massive deployment of their uh, data centers. Okay? I thank you very much for your attention, and I'll be around if you have further questions later on. Thank you.